Today I'm going to show you how to make some brushes that we can turn into some fun spirograph patterns, just like the old spirograph toy where you used to spin the marker around and get the fun patterns. Um, we're just going to do this digitally today in Illustrator. So you can open up a letter size document in Illustrator. It really does not have to be a letter size document, but I always choose letter because that gives you enough room to work. Um, and we want nothing to be on our our document while we're working. So I'm, I've got a couple layers I've already been working on here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the visibility off for all of the ones I've been working on and then I've created a new layer up here and that's what I'm going to keep my visibility on and I've just locked down any layers. So if you're going through this process and you want to keep layers just to kind of keep what you've done, just lock them and turn the visibility off as you go forward. Okay, so we're going to start out with our shape tools and Ellipse is a good place to start, but you can do this with any of your shape tools. I'm going to go in here and just draw a simple ellipse by holding the, down the shift key and clicking and dragging. And right now I'm in a teal color, and that's fine. If you want to change these colors, we can do that here in just a little bit too. I'm going to choose my selection tool, hold down my option key until I see those black and white arrows, and then I'm going to click then hold down the shift key and drag a new duplicate of that shape out. So let me do that one more time. Hold down the option key until I see the black and white arrows. Click, then hold down the shift key and drag another out. So I want to have three of these before I start my next process. And before I do that, I'm going to go in and also change the colors a little bit because I want this to have kind of a, a colorful blend to it as it's going along. So these don't have to be evenly spaced out, so don't worry about that. Um, you can space them out however you like, but you know, keep them close enough together so that you can see what you're doing here. Um, if we have a teal down here at the bottom, we want to find a color that's close to that as we're going up here. So if I'm at teal, maybe I do kind of more of a blue, and then maybe I go for a dark, oops, a dark purple up at the top. Something I didn't say before, but you've probably noticed here, I also don't have a fill on any of these shapes, so you will not want to have a fill when you're drawing this part here. All right, so once you're at this stage, we're going to click and drag our arrow across to select all of these, and then we're going to do a blend. So I'm going to do uh, object, one of these, object, blend, and make. And what we're seeing now is that I probably have too many steps in my blend. The blend will kind of take all of these shapes and, as it sounds, blend them together. And sometimes it's a smooth blend, which is just like a giant shape. Sometimes it has different steps in it. And when those steps are really close together, it looks something like this. So I need to go in and edit this so that I can see the steps that are in this process. So I'm going to go to Object, Blend blend options and I want to make sure I have preview checked as well. So I guess I did have this set to smooth color so you can see that does look fairly smooth. Now I'm going to go in and choose specified steps. Now it looks about the same because this is a lot of steps that I have here but I'm going to change that to 10 and if you kind of click back and forth here you can see what happens. I'm going to align this to path so I'm going to click here to the right and then I'm going to choose OK. Now, if, you're, if you choose 10 and it looks a little bit more spaced out than this, you can choose any number of steps that you want until you're happy with what you see. Once you have this blend, we need to uh, duplicate this. So first, I'm going to decrease it, scale it down a little bit. I'm going to hold my shift key, grab the corner, and just scale it. Now I need to duplicate it by holding down the option key and then click hold down the shift key and drag this until we have a duplicate. And I want to position it so that the circle lines up like it's just part of that original blend. And if you need to use your arrow keys to get that where it needs to be, you can do that. Now one thing I have to do before I move forward, right now we have dark to light, dark to light. I need to switch this so that it goes dark to light to dark. So I need to click on the bottom blend that we have here and go to Object, Transform, whoa, and, whoa, let's try that again, Object, Transform, Reflect, 
And I want to make this a horizontal reflection. Make sure you have preview checked. If you, I uncheck this, you can see how that changes. Um, and then if you're happy with what you see, that it goes from dark light to dark, hit OK. Or whatever color you have. If you have light up here, then make sure it's matching the same thing down here. OK, so now we need to expand this blend. And so we need to select all of the blends, the top and the bottom. We're going to go to Object. Now we could choose Expand here, but that wouldn't actually give us what we want because we want to do an expansion of the blend. So I need to go down to Blend and under Blend, choose Expand. After we've done that, then we can go under Object and Expand. We want to expand the fill in the stroke and hit OK. So go ahead and click off of that once you've done all of those steps. And you would think we're about ready to save this as a brush, but we have to do one more thing. If I were to save this as a brush right now and try to use it on another ellipse, what would happen is I would have these two circles at the end, so it wouldn't really come together seamlessly. So in order to make a seamless brush, I need to chop these ends off. So I'm going to go to my rectangle tool, and I'm just going to use a black here for my, for my stroke. And I'm going to try to draw a box. Let me try to line this up here. Use your arrow keys if you need to. I'm going to try to draw a box that kind of chops this right at the edge of these two full circles at the end. And then once you have that box the way that you want, if you need to adjust it, you can go into your uh, selection tool, which is V for the keyboard shortcut. And you can kind of move that around. Once you have it the way that you want, Go up to the top with your selection tool, click and drag a box over the whole thing so that everything gets selected. Now we need to use our Pathfinder tool. And our Pathfinder tool, if you have never used this, it has a variety of options that allow you to build and to divide and to crop different shapes and paths together. So um, we are just going to be using one of these options today, which is the crop option. So if you have all of this ready and selected, just click on Crop. If you don't see your Pathfinder window in any of your options, you can always find it also under Window. So just make sure that Pathfinder is checked and it should pop up. All right, so there is our final kind of brush once it's done, except that we can still see this rectangle on the side. So I need to go in and delete that. I'm just going to draw a little box next to the side of this brush. Oops, actually I'm going to do that with my direct selection tool, my white arrow here. Draw this little box, hit delete twice to delete that out. Draw a box on this side, hit delete twice to delete that out. Then draw another box over the whole thing. Go into your brush window. Again, if you don't see that, you can go up to window and make sure that you have brushes checked. And you can add a new brush right here. And we're going to call, we're actually going to choose an art brush here. And you can call it whatever you want art brush for is fine, but I could call this uh, circle spirograph. I'm going to stretch to fit stroke length. And instead of overlapping, I want that to just kind of join together. So you can click this button. And I do want to change the color on this. I do want the option to change the color on this. So for that, I'm going to choose hue shift so that I can just actually change the color, but the values are going to stay largely the same. And then once you're done, hit OK, and you'll see that that has actually popped up in our brush window here. So if I want to, I can go ahead and delete this now. And then I can go into my ellipse tool again, draw an ellipse, and then all I have to do is select my new brush over here and that will create that spirograph pattern. So it's really fun. Now currently I'm set to a black stroke but I can also go into my colors here and change to any color that I want. And you can see the fun thing about that is that our values depending on the hue that you choose our values are still there so we see that light to dark shift as that goes around. Another thing that you can do to modify this is you can change the um, the size of the stroke so that will also change the way that this looks and that's really fun another way that whoa <laughs> actually that's really fun um, another way that you can also modify these is if you apply this to 
a rounded rectangle. So if I go in here with a rounded rectangle and I hold down the shift key while I'm drawing that, I'm going to duplicate that rounded rectangle by hitting command C and then paste it in place with a command shift V. Hit V again to get to my move tool and then hold my shift key to turn that new duplicate so that I have these two um, rounded rectangles here. So if you remember when you used, if you used to play with a spirograph, you may remember that, um, you know, sometimes you wouldn't have a perfect circle. You'd have kind of these angles that would happen that would kind of make something that looked somewhat circular. So if we use our rounded rectangle for this, we can create something that has a little bit more of a pattern to it. And then if we actually take the point size down on that stroke, you can really start to see how that comes together. You could even take this and group it. Command G or Control G if you're not on a Mac. And then you could rotate this again, which this is a little bit more of kind of, I, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, be good if you copied this first, so Command C, then Command Shift V. And now you can rotate that again so that you get kind of four different rounded rectangles that are coming together in almost a circle here. So um, you can use this kind of method. You can create ellipses. You could copy the ellipse and then Command Shift V to paste again. Shift, click, Option, and you can decrease so that you have this perfectly centered um, duplicate of what you just made. Then you can change up your brushes. So if I wanted to go in and have, add a different brush, change the point size on that, I can. Sometimes these are really fun too, to even overlap. Um, so you could overlap some of these brushes, change some of the colors as you're going through, and they can be really fun. Um, so you can try this with all different types of shapes. I'm going to go ahead and show you one more that you can do here. I'm going to create a new layer to work on. And this time I'm actually going to use a rounded rectangle because you don't always have to use the ellipse. And with the rounded rectangle, I'll just kind of stick here with red. I'm going to hold the shift key down and draw that and then go into my uh, selection tool here and hold my option key down until I see double arrows. Click, hold down the shift and duplicate that out. And then one more time. So I'm going to go red, orange, maybe gold here. Select that all, object, blend, make, object, blend, blend options, instead of smooth colors, specified steps, preview. Sometimes it's good to have less steps, sometimes it's good to have more, it just kind of depends. Um, I'm going to try four here, eh, maybe more, six, seven. <laughs> All right, okay, that's not too bad. The one important thing though that you want to notice is you wanna see where the pattern actually changes. So here I'm seeing that I have this pattern here and this pattern here, so I can tell where the pattern is stopping and starting. So as you get ready to select, that's gonna be really important. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead again, grab this, decrease it, scale it down, Duplicate it, hold down the option key, click, and then hold the shift key down. Let me try that again. Uh, grab this, option key, click, and then hold the shift key down as you're pulling that to duplicate it. Grab this bottom blend here. Go to object, transform, reflect. Okay. Grab the whole thing, object, blend, expand, and object, expand, fill and stroke. Okay. So now that I have that, I need to go back to my rounded rectangle, select black here. And again, I'm going to be looking for where that pattern actually ends. So I could actually look at where that full rounded rectangle is on either side. So sometimes this is a little tricky when you're trying to decide where to finish these little endpoints off. 
but try to make it so that it would line up. All right, and then after I have that, select the whole thing, go down here to my Pathfinder, and I'm going to crop. So you can see once you get used to doing this, it's not too difficult to make a lot of different brushes. And you can try, try them with all different types of shapes. You could even rotate the shapes as you're going through and just see how that creates a different style of brush for you. That could be really fun. I'm going to add a new art brush. OK. And I'll call this uh, burning rounded rectangle. Oh, rectangle. There we go. Stretch to fit stroke length. And I'm going to do a hue shift. I'm going to match that up. OK. So now if I go ahead back to my layers, turn this off, lock that, turn the pattern that I was kind of playing around on here, or playing around with here, I can go back to my lips tool and, or actually I'll go here to my, oh, in the wrong layer, no wonder. Go back to my selection tool, grab this ellipse, and if I go back to my brushes here, I can add the brush that I just created. So you can see it has kind of a fun pattern to it. Gives you a slightly different look. I can still modify that. And one last thing you can do is if you have some of these things and you do overlap them, you can even go into your transparency window here and try some different blend modes. You could do a soft light, do an overlay, and see how that kind of affects the kind of blending that you're getting with the spirograph. So there's endless possibilities with this. You can have a ton of fun making new brushes. Enjoy and kind of go back to your childhood where you can just play and have fun. Good luck.